Praise the Lord, man. We need to get right back into this because you know what we've been talking about, avoiding satanic stewardship. Thank you once again for joining us, for tuning in to Living in His Image on Purpose. Man, we was dealing with this thing about avoiding satanic stewardship. You know what? And I challenge you that whenever there's something that you hear someone telling you that you should not do, if there is anything mentioned in the word of God about it, I challenge you, go back and study. See what the word says for yourself, because I challenge you, every single opportunity you have to be obedient to God, praise the Lord. I need you to understand that the same way, the exact same way that you understand that the enemy comes, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says that wherever the seed of the word is planted, the enemy is always going to be right there to steal the seed. Let's get right back into this word. The Bible says, praise the Lord, that Jacob now obviously have been exposed to the life of his father Isaac and even to his grandfather Abram. And now Jacob is doing just like many of us. You, you venture out, you leave home, you, you begin to wonder, do I want to worship the same God that my parents worship? Do I want to live the way they live? Jacob is confronted with the same thing. But Jacob all of a sudden says, wait a minute. Something has to be different. Jacob says in verse number 20, the word says that he vows a vow and say, God, will you be with me? He says, if you will be with me the same way you was with my father and my grandfather, he says, if you will be with me the way that I'm going, he says, if you give me bread, make sure I don't go hungry. If you will give me shoes to put on my feet and clothes to wear, he says, I want you to know right now that if you do these things, he says, I want you to know that when I come to my father's house, if you do that, he says, you're going to be my God. I'm going to actually come to you right now. I want you to understand that Jacob is actually acknowledging right here. He's saying, God, if you would do these things for me, you're going to be my God also. But then he also says in verse number 22, he says, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar like a memorial, he says, this shall be God's house. This is going to be one episode that happened in my life. You remember, I remember in my life, I remember the time when I got so drunk and I was so tipsy and so messed up coming home. I passed out behind the wheel, y'all, and totaled my car. But you know what? God saw fit that from that moment, I told God I made a promise I would never drink like that again. I would never get loaded like that again. And you know what? That was like a pillar for me. That was a, a memorial, if you would, because it's never happened again like that. And you know what? Based on this word right here, the word says Jacob is saying this is going to be my memorial. That if you do all those things, he said this is going to be my place where I understand that this is the house of God. He says and everything that you give me. From this point, I'm going to give you a tithe of it. I'm going to give you a 10%. I'm going to give you a tenth of it. Praise the Lord. Don't take my word for it. Notice, he's not saying anything about grain and wheat right here. He's not talking about sheep and goats and turtle doves. Praise the Lord. He's not talking about pigeons. Right here, he's talking about whatever it is that you give unto me. I'm going to give you 10% of it. I'm going to give you a tenth of it. You know why? Because you've been faithful to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're not talking about a law. We're talking about a promise. Praise the Lord. The same way if a husband has a wife that he truly loves, he's not going to tell that wife, baby, I'll give you $1,000 tonight if you just let me go sleep with my ex. Do you think she'll take that if she's in her right mind knowing she would never take it? But if it was nothing dealing with going sleep with the ex and just say, baby, I got an extra thousand dollars. Do you want it? The only way she won't take it is if she's sitting on so much that she look at you and say, baby, you need it more. But if she need it or if she want it or even like it, you better believe she's going to take it. Most women, even if they don't need it, they're going to take it. Praise the Lord. This is what it's talking about when we say giving to God. 
It's, it's about us saying, wait a minute, God, what is it that's pleasing to you? Y'all, we got to leave the realm of the natural because the Lord knows that he's establishing his government in the earth. And there is a level of, hallelujah, currency that is necessary even in this earth that is necessary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's go on. Let's go further. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Hallelujah. And 17. Matthew 5. And 17. Praise the Lord. Because you got so many people that when they talk about tithing and talking about giving to God, let me tell you something. We're talking about avoiding satanic stewardship. Satanic stewardship makes you more concerned about you. Praise the Lord. Satanic stewardship always says, what about me? It's vanity. But godly stewardship says, wait a minute. Everything I have, I got to be a good steward over it. So that means, Lord, if you're first in my life, Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. The word says everything else shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Some people were talking about, you know, because the law has been destroyed and because tithing was Old Testament. Let's see what the word says. What did Christ himself say? Matthew 5 and 17. Look what he says. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. He says, I'm coming to show as a demonstration. I've come to be an example. Because he says he understands that the law was impossible for his people to keep without him. Praise the Lord. Christ is the fulfillment of it right now. He says, I didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Look what he says in verse number 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these, the least of these commandments, and shall teach men how to break the commandments also, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do these and teach them, the same shall be called great. Now remember, we're dealing with Cain and Abel. We're dealing with Abram and the king of Sodom. Jesus right now is saying, let me put a spin on it. Great and least like least is you getting to the point where you're not even in it. You almost not even here. He says, if you're teaching somebody to do something contrary to my word, he says, as if you're going to the edge of the plank, it's like you going out to where eventually you may not even be a part of it anymore. Hallelujah. Come on, let's don't take my word for it. I'm not giving opinions. I'm giving what does the word of God say? Because I've seen prominent men who say that, you know what, this is not of God anymore, you know, and, and, and we're not talking about money and, we, you know, that's talking about grain and talking about this and that. What does the word say? Look what he says right here in verse number 20. Verse number 20. For I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So wait a minute. The scribes and the Pharisees, they understood what it meant to be religious. They heard the word. They tried to do the word. But in the midst of them trying to fulfill the word, it was their heart that wasn't in the right place. Jesus says right here, he didn't say if, if the scribes and the Pharisees' righteousness is right here as religion, he says, except your righteousness, he didn't say go less than. He says, go greater than, exceed, do more than, go beyond. He says, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of those who are religious, you will not even enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The law was set in a position so that we can know what sin is. Praise the Lord. But now grace doesn't come to go under the law. The law doesn't cover grace. 
Grace now is greater. Hallelujah. So now I understand that my sins are paid for every sin that I've ever committed. Grace covered it. The sins that I will commit, grace covers it. And I know if, you, if you're religious and, and if you're self-righteous, you're afraid of even saying that. But I believe by faith that my sins are under the blood. But I also understand, shall man continue in sin, hoping that God's grace will continually abound? God forbid. God forbid. If you're choosing to walk forward in grace, I mean, in, in sin, thinking that God's grace is going to continually cover and you have a mindset to go against the things of God, I challenge you to know that that's not grace at all. But it's the spirit of Cain. It's the same spirit that came to Eve to deceive her, to make her not honor God with the word that God gave her husband. It's the same spirit that came to Cain to try to persuade Abel to not do what God told him and showed him what was respectful. Who's who's challenging you right now? Wherever there's a level of obedience, wherever there is a willingness to do what is pleasing to God, I challenge you to know right now the enemy is always going to be right there to stop you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Your righteousness must be greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I receive from Christ, what I receive from Yeshua, from Jesus himself. Hallelujah is greater. Hallelujah. I'm not dealing with the fruit anymore. I'm dealing with the root. Everything that God gave me, every seed that was planted. God is expecting it to be even greater now. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Let's go further. Hallelujah. Let's go. To, let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Hebrews 10 now. I hope this is helping somebody because I know you have many challenges. Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10 and 6. Hallelujah. Because we're no longer under the law to the same degree. But this is in retrospect to sin. Hallelujah. This is what it talks about when the, when the Bible talks about not being in bondage to even a law of tithing per se and giving of sacrificial gifts. It was because they were given in such a way to cover their sin. And now we understand that Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMessiah, he is the only atonement for my sin. So now there is no more paying for sin. No more. Praise the Lord. Christ is the fulfillment and the only fulfillment. Praise the Lord. Look what the word says right here in Hebrews 10 and verse number six. Look what it says. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have no pleasure. No more pleasure. Praise the Lord. So now you're looking at your wife like, man, I wish my wife would let me go out and commit adultery. Let me have this woman or whatever. You know what? And because she ain't going for it, let me let me pay for her to go on a trip. Let me let me give her some money. Let me let me give her a thousand dollars so that she can let me do what I want to do. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, wait a minute. If your wife is in her right mind, would she literally receive a bribe? Nah, no way. No way. She's going to say, you know what? I want you to love me and not want to be with somebody else because, first of all, because you love God and then also you love me. Praise the Lord. This is what the word is talking about. Praise the Lord. This is not talking about just doing away with the tithe as we know it. This is not talking about even a law of tithing. I'm talking about the principle where we get a chance to understand that it's something significant about this 10%. It's something significant that Abram, Isaac, and Jacob all knew for well. It's something that even, that even Abel understood, and Cain got upset about it. And Cain said, are you going to continue to do that? You think it's worth it? And Abel said, man, you know what? You do what you want to do. The Bible never makes mention of anything. Abel having any problem with what Cain chose to do on his own. But the biggest thing is, evidently, Abel wasn't about to allow how Cain felt to change his mindset. Hallelujah. You know what? I feel the same way. 
I'm not going to let anything or anybody change my mindset because I really believe this is something significant to God. Praise the Lord. Let's look what the word says in verse number seven. Verse number seven of Hebrews 10. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me or written about me to do your will, God. This is this is what Christ is saying. Christ is saying, you know what? I've come now. A fulfillment of what this word is saying. And he's saying, Father, I'm the demonstration. That's why the Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He says, I'm here to do your will. Remember, he said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it, to be a demonstration. This is why God is trying to raise up husbands as true men of God. You know why? So you can be a demonstration in front of your wife. So you can be a demonstration in front of your sons and your daughters. Praise the Lord. He says right here, I've come to do your will, O God. Verse number eight. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, you would as not. Like in other words, you don't take pleasure in all these offerings for sin. He says, now, neither have you pleasure in it, which is offered by the law, meaning somebody told you to do that. Somebody told you to do it. But now you understand this is now my desire to do it. I don't give 10 percent because I feel like I'm going to go to hell if I don't. I feel like I truly understand that there is something significant about what God expects. Hallelujah. What happens when a man chooses to get married to a woman? Praise the Lord. Prayerfully, it is a woman. Praise the Lord. But when a man chooses to marry his wife. He understands that it's something about her, something special about her. If she said that she likes to like if red is her favorite color, it may not be your color, man of God, but it's not about you. It's about her. So now you begin to do things that please her. That's what the word is talking about. We're the wife. Hallelujah. We're the bride. The way a wife would say Bae, I know you like this. I know you like this type of jewelry. Or I know to my husband, I know what you like. So I'm going to give you what you like. Praise the Lord. That's what God is expecting us to be like. Why you think the first commandment is that we shall love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength? If we love him that much, how much are we willing to do? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offering, offering for sin, you would as not. Neither do you even have pleasure in when you offered by law. Verse number nine. Then said he, lo, I come to do your will, O God. He taketh the will of first that he may establish the second. Hallelujah. Remember, the law is here. He says, but he establishes grace. Hallelujah. The Bible says for now, grace covers a multitude of sin. You know why? Because when you're really born again, you begin to have a desire to please your father, your real father. Hallelujah. So now I understand I'm forgiven. So now I have to do everything in my power, everything in his power that I can to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. And verse number 10, last verse in Hebrews 10, look what it says. By the which we will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering by the body of Christ Jesus once and for all. So now we can come boldly to the throne of grace because our sin has been atoned because of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now because it is Jesus says, Follow me now. Pick up your cross and follow me. That means the same thing that he's done for us. He says, as the father has sent me, now I send you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You be that example, woman of God, to your daughters. You be that example to your sons. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus. You be that example. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's switch over right now to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. 
and verse number four. Hebrews 11 and four. Because remember, y'all, everything that is done is all by faith. The Bible says everything that we do for God, if it's not in faith, is sin. Everything that is not of faith is sin. Look what the word says here in 11, Hebrews 11 and 4. The Bible says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Remember, Cain offered a sacrifice also. But what made Abel's more excellent? Hallelujah. The Bible says, Abel offered the firstlings of what he gave by faith. I'm giving to you, God, first. I'm giving to you first. Cain said, let me see what I got. He gave an offering. That was good. But what Abel gave was excellent. Praise the Lord. A more excellent. Look what it says. Verse number four. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it, he being dead, yet he still speaks. So this is the word saying right now that even though Abel died way thousands of years ago, Old Testament, even though he dead, he's still speaking. What if he's still speaking? What is he saying? The only thing that's testifying is his life. No matter how short it was, how did he choose to live? Praise the Lord. He chose to be considered significant by God himself because of what he chose to give. Hallelujah. Who's, who's influencing you and what you give right now? Praise the Lord. Remember, Cain, Abel. Remember, remember that. The king of Sodom and Abram. Abram said, I don't care what you got going on. I'm not taking nothing from you. I'm not going to not do what the Lord is calling me to do. You know why? Because I'm avoiding satanic stewardship. If God said don't touch it, I'm not going to touch it. If God gave it to me, I'm not going to give it to you for any, any other gain, even if it costs my life. Praise the Lord. More excellent. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. So now, Abel doing these things calls God to look at him and say, you're righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, he's still speaking. Still speaking. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord God. Are your words that you're speaking right now able to live on? Hallelujah. Jesus himself said, Yeshua himself said, not one jot or one tittle of this word is going to pass until everything is fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Let's go on a little bit further. Watch this. Let's go to um, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 and verse number 24. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. Look at what the word says in, in verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Remember, Abel was actually given an offering, but his offering was also to cover sin. But in the midst of it, we're not given to cover sin anymore. We're given because of our love for, 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 for causing the kingdom of God to advance. Praise the Lord. And now we're willing to give of our bodies. We're willing to give of ourselves. Remember, Jesus actually demonstrated this when, when the disciples asked him, is it right right now? Is it right to give taxes, to pay taxes? Jesus said, whose face is on the coin? That right there lets you know he wasn't talking about grain. Are talking about turtle doves and sheep and bullocks and goats. He says, whose face is on the coin? He said, you better give to Caesar what belongs to him. But you better give to God what belongs to him. Hallelujah. As long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest. Praise the Lord that the kingdom may, be, may continually be established in the earth. Praise the Lord. 
The word says unto Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. Now let's turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians. Praise the Lord. 11. And let's go to verse number 24. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 24. Look at what this word says. The word says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Y'all listen, this is avoiding satanic stewardship. Christ is showing us that he's willing to give his body as the ultimate demonstration of what the love of God is. Praise the Lord, which is broken for you. He says, now do this in remembrance of me. This is why God is actually commanding husbands to love their wives, that they would give their body as a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's turn real quick right now to 1 John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 1 John 3 and 12. 1 John 3 and 12. Praise the Lord. Look what the word says. Hallelujah. Not as Cain. Hallelujah. Who was of the wicked one and slew his own brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers was righteous. And now wait a minute. His works were evil. What was evil about it? What he chose to give God. And because he recognized how Abel was feeling, he started being jealous and envious of his own brother. Praise the Lord. Remember, y'all, we have to walk in his image on purpose. Don't forget what the Lord is calling you to. Please join us as we live in his image on purpose. Thank you so much and God bless you. Hallelujah.